Welcome back, Nauta fans. We have another match. Once again, this is the tournament. 1v1 tournament and match now between Draven and Player01. We'll refer to as Player from now on. So, Draven and Player. Not actually the most... Actually, I never thought I'd actually be in a situation where I'd actually have a player called Player1. He is, in fact, Player1, however, so that's convenient. But both players are just selecting what they're doing. We're on Supreme... Or Small Supreme Battlefield once again. Which is hopefully not going to be quite so Ismus focused as it was last time, but I'm not holding out hope because it is a. Land does not work well in this map. It's just one thin thing. There's a lot of water, not a lot of land. Anyway, game is starting and we have. Player one in the southwest. Or sorry, Draven in the southwest corner of the map. Player one in the northeast corner of the map. Yellow, Draven is orange. And player one just getting himself set up. King is really economy going. Let's see what he's going for. Pretty standard. Nothing too special. This isn't like Nada. You're gonna have a lot of very deviant openings. Like, no like factory start into some sort of early rush. And the thing is, the way the towers are set up, the towers actually prevent that to begin with. I also point out that player one is going core while Draven is going for arm. But yeah, the the defenses in the towers kind of prevent any early aggression and raids and ways. Actually. Oh, you know what? Never mind! Apparently I'm wrong! Player 1 is in fact going for a very early factory start that might be going into an early raid to try to beat Draven as quickly as possible because Draven is going for a much more economic opening. Rather than going for a more military start, it's actually his factory is going to be next. There's a bot factory coming up fairly soon. The vehicle factory is now done, but nothing's being built. If he's going to go for this, he has to build this... Okay, there he is. Setting up some units now. He has to be on the ball about that. Getting early levelers... Is he going to stop any early... Well, stop any early bots if he gets the energy for that. That's the one thing. He needs to have his energy up here because that is not coming up quickly. If his energy is not up, then it won't much matter what's going on because energy is what he needs right now. Draven, on the other hand, is perfectly good for energy. His bot factory is very is complete. Not very nearly complete. It's completely complete. Probably going to get a few fleas and some AKs. Or no, starting with Constructor and Hammers. Okay, so he's going to go for Constructor Early Start, probably from there into either Reclaim or Building More Metal Extractors, which is not surprising. Or no, never mind, he's going for Hammers first, sorry, just, you can't see the Q order on here, so all I can see is that a Constructor will be built fairly soon. Hammers, however, are coming up. They will not do especially well against the Levelers. Rockos are kind of what's needed. And that first Leveler is up! And the second Leveler is up, and more Levelers are coming out ad infinitum, because that's how this game works by default. And also very quickly setting up some metal extractors around here too. Player 1 wants to make sure he has all the metal. And he's going to succeed at that. Well, actually, he's not getting the metal to the north. He needs to get that too, but he will be fairly soon. And this level is not moving... Okay, that's that's kind of a waste. If he's going for an early factory start, he should attack with the early factory. He's he's behind an... Well, actually, he's ahead in economy, come to think of it. But he's behind an energy. He's ahead in metal, which is what matters more. That being said, it's more just because energy was what... Draven decided to go for, while Player 1 decided to go more heavily for metal. Yeah, I'm just surprised. Why is he not building up? Like, why is he not attacking with this? Oh, he's going to the center of the map. His levelers are going to... He can assume that his opponent's going for a bot start. I don't know why he isn't just moving out to the center. He has no radar, mind you. Neither player actually has radar. It looks like Draven's about to get it, though. Or is he? No, he's not. He is, in fact, just going for more power plants. More solar plants on his own. Ah. Yeah, Pepe and Pepe are pointing out in the chat that they were considering going for Supreme Battlefield Dry, which would have been cool, or maybe Supreme Battlefield, or Small Supreme Islands, which I never actually played on, so I don't know how well that's going to work. Dry would have been kind of cool, though. I mean, I don't mind water, it's just that this map just has this isness. It's the only land-based thing, and water, while strong, is kind of expensive. The players tend not to go for it too quickly. And that's kind of unfortunate because it means that there's just going to be this one fight along the center. Now, the levelers are going to do a massive number, and I don't know if Rock... No, Rockos are not forthcoming yet. It looks like hammers are the only units being built. Okay, metal shards are being built. Draven is starting to get more metal going, and he's still behind in terms of metal, but the thing is, there's actually not much going... Okay, 
Player one needs to build another factory. If he's going to go with this, needs to build another factory or build some constructors or do something other than build with one factory. He has enough metal to build off of one factory right now. At least for the unit he's building. I think I think the factory might actually have a particular build rate regardless. So I think it's always going to be minus 15 metal. So he needs another factory right now. He is... He is going to... Well, is he going to go? I mean, seriously. Build another factory. He's just reclaiming this tree for energy, but doesn't really need to do that right now. Oh, building more solar plants, but no. Okay, there we go. Building a sea factory right off the bat. There we go. Player one going for early sea. Draven, on the other hand, not going for anything too early. When is he... Okay. He's got the center here. He has these hammers here. And the levelers up top are not being used. I mean, like I said, player one can march down and win. Actually, the longer he waits, the harder it's going to be for him to win. Oh, no, actually, right now it's probably the optimal time. If he attacked sooner, he probably wouldn't have gone in that far. If he attacks now, he should be able to take out everything, tear apart this factory, and go into Draven's base and attack. And... Might be waiting for the shipyard, though. Setting up a couple... Oh, patrol frigates. Oh, right, because he's playing cores as more specialized ships. And... Just getting more and more levelers. Although, he is now starting to get short on metal again. Might want to get some reclaim. Might want to get some more metal extractors. However, the levelers are starting to move out. They are getting into a line. Should double check radar. No radar for player one. Radar for Draven. Draven knows what's going on. He knows there is a force coming down here. Not sure if he knows what it is, but he can probably tell from the speed that they are vehicles. But I don't know. Maybe not, actually. When I think of it, the vehicle speed is not that different from bot speed. But you can probably tell from the numbers that it's likely to be vehicles and not bots, because there's only half a dozen of them. But at this point, player one is not pushing out. He doesn't actually know what's going on. He needs to get radar. That's the thing. First off, he needs to get radar so he knows what's going on in here. And then he can push in. I mean, I know he can push in. And you, the viewers, know he can push in. But he doesn't know he can push in. And now he's exposed that he's going vehicles, going for levelers. Rockos are going to be built. Oh, well, Rockos and infiltrators, but... Yeah, Rockos are very likely to be built it pretty soon because levelers are pretty powerful. Okay, is that armor widget not working or something? Because that should be there. I don't know why that armor widget isn't showing up. Sorry about this. I don't mean to get in the way with a widget list, but... Oh no, armor display is on. I guess levelers just aren't armored. Good to know! And... Levelers still being built. Mando Blade being built as well. That's going to be set up. Okay, C control is apparently a priority of player ones right now. And now he's getting metal again, so he does have metal once again. Draven, however, has a massive metal advantage. He is... He, because of that builder, is able to build lots of metal extractors. And... No push in. I don't... I don't understand why this is... Well... Why is this what he's going for? He's finally getting a construction vehicle, but... Oh, okay, never mind. God pointing out Lovelace counter rockers. Oh, he's right. That's right, they do. But what I'm curious about is why he isn't going for, then, Zeus's. Because Zeus's were doing pretty well against Levelers, but he is not. He is going for Infiltrators, however, and that's... He just gets him close. I don't think they actually deal damage, though. No, they don't. They do not deal damage at all. They pretty much are just there to see things. But he knows what's going on. He knows there's stuff here. I'm still surprised, though, despite this, that Hammers are... Scaring away... Actually, I don't even think that player one knows what's going on. He hasn't actually seen... He has not made visual contact with anything that Draven has. They're both just waiting and building up. Neither player has even scouted out the other at this point. Mando Blade here finally being sent out for possibly scouting. What is his vision range? Okay, this is his vision range, or it's radar range. So he has mobile radar, effectively, but he doesn't... He knows what's here. He knows there's stuff here. He is finally moving out. These levelers are finally moving to attack... And the hammers are going to meet them halfway. Of course, there's construction in the way. That construction is actually in the way of one of the levelers. It's going to stop it from attacking too much, but doesn't matter. The rest of them are able to get in. It looks like the hammers actually are... No, the hammers are a good answer to levelers. Okay, good to know. That being said, levelers are also a good answer to hammers. And, as you can see, able to tear them apart pretty quickly. Not sure about cost effectively, though. That's the one thing. Because all these levelers just went down. This is kind of what I was saying. Waiting was a bad idea. Although, it looks like even without waiting would have been a bad idea. But it looks like the leveler 
Not quite able to beat the hammer. One hammer left and all the levelers dead. So that answers a good question. What would have happened? That's what would happen. And this ship does not apparently have any way of easily hitting the land. Or if it does, it's not long enough range. Cannot be used for coastal bombardment. The hammer can bombard it, though. It's taking a fair amount of damage. I'm a bit surprised that's being allowed to happen. That player one is allowing that to happen, but he is. For whatever reason. More levelers being built. Okay, now that we know what happens with levelers, and that it doesn't work especially well, that should probably point out that a better option would be something like Reapers. Or actually, Reapers are too expensive. Raiders, maybe. Actually, Raiders are cheaper. So yeah, Raiders are quite a bit cheaper. I'm not going for that. Because levelers have, as you can see, 575 health. That little plus sign in the bottom right corner, that's health. Raiders, on the other hand, have 1,058. So they have twice the health for half the cost. At least half the metal cost. But nope, he is continuing to go for levelers, which, while they do deal a lot of damage to bots, hammers, as we saw, tear them apart. Which is good to know. Good to know for future reference that hammers tear them apart, and I apologize I didn't point that out sooner because I'm still kind of new to this. However, an enforcer being built up to try to deal, deal the hammers some coastal bombardment. I'm a bit surprised he isn't going for broadside. The thing with ships in Nota is that you have to broadside them. As best as possible, you want to go for broadside. And there we go, now he's going for the broadside. Not sure if that's intentional or not, but it's generally a good idea. I believe with this particular ship, the enforcer front siding isn't actually a terribly bad thing, just because the cannon in the front is actually very powerful. But it doesn't matter. Coastal bombardment is actually harder than I expected it would be. At least for these ships. A missile frigate would probably be pretty good. Yeah, the Vanquisher here, that would probably do fine. But it's also very expensive, so it would take a while to get to. But still, that would be probably the thing to do, really. No, more levelers coming in, and the hammers doing what they can to deal with them. And, of course, what they can do is very effective damage. We've seen that already. They, they appear to be the counter to the levelers. Because levelers aren't armored and don't have very much health. And like I said, more levelers coming in. Nothing else is coming in. Certainly nothing else that has any armor on it. So Rockos aren't being built. Because why would they be? Which means that any other vehicle is actually going to do just fine because Rockos aren't being built. But at this point, I'm not even sure how much it matters. There's airplanes coming in. And it looks like... Oh, Geothermal plant coming in as well. So right now, Draven has three times advantage economy. Wise. Compared to player one. Player one has 20 metal, Draven has 60. Some of that, of course, is reclaim, but reclaim is really not to be discounted. Even without reclaim, we still got a 2 to 1 advantage for economy. Geothermal plant coming up for player one. He definitely needs it. But right now, Draven is just a matter of time when he's going to take this. He does scare away the enforcer off the field. Not sure why the enforcer is just going. He should just. The Enforcer should just go for the factory here. He doesn't know where it is, but he should just go for it. I mean... No, he doesn't know where it is. What am I saying? Why? No, he does! He doesn't know there's something there. He doesn't necessarily know it's a factory, though, but... He's not scouting... That's one thing I'm noticing. Players really aren't scouting out very much. This Mandal Blade looks like it might be scouting out, but it looks like he's just trying to patrol the water. But yeah, they... Not a lot of intel being gathered here. And that Enforcer gone down! Complete waste! That could have gone... If he had more knowledge of what was going on in the map, if he knew what was going on... If he knew there was a factory here, that Enforcer could have torn apart that factory in no time. Now two air plants coming up, and I think Draven is going to win it from here. He's building up some Thunders. Strategic Bomber, probably just going to build up five or six Thunders and go for the tower directly. Well, find the tower, and then go for it directly. And it looks like... Oh, I can't do that. So it looks like Draven sees everything going on in the Isthmus and doesn't need to anymore. He's got the Isthmus. Player 1, he has a bit of radar from this Mandel Blade, but it does not help him. It's not in the right position. No radar on the ground. That's If anything's cost Player 1 the game, it's that. It's the complete lack of knowledge of what his opponent is up to. He does not know where his opponent is, what his opponent is building. He has, he's going to be completely in the dark this entire game. Everything he has seen, everything he has seen has been just here. This is the, this is the line past which he has not ever gotten any knowledge. And that's just sloppy. I mean, that's the thing. You, in any RTS game, you need to know what your opponent is doing. That is a basic RTS skill is scouting. It's extremely important. Even though not is a game where it's kind of difficult to scout, because even raiders are and scouts are fairly expensive, it's still important to try, just to push in, especially very early in the game, so you know where your opponent's first factory is. And just so you know what that is. 
and also what they're going for, how quickly they're going for a factory, what economy, like, just no knowledge whatsoever. Completely in the dark. Draven was also kind of in the dark too, but he... He didn't get quite so bit by it. I guess he just knew whatever he goes for, Hammer's going to be okay. So in his case, he pulled it off, but even then, more information would have been useful. I mean, these Mando Blades are kind of in a position where they can be somewhat effective for Radar, but not that effective. The Radar Shadow isn't even helping them. The radar can't go past terrain, and there's terrain right here that's stopping it. So they are not helpful. The Generator... Or sorry, the Generator. The Command Center here, or Core Central Consciousness, as it's called, it is... It's going to go down. I mean, the Thunders... Where are those Thunders? I was watching them being built... See how many of those are there. There are currently five, or well, currently four active and three being constructed. Looks like he's going for, I don't know how many he's going to build before he goes for the tower. Probably, I guess at this one, more like ten. But these hammers just getting the economy. Tile generators and metal makers being set up for player one to try to desperately stay in the game, but that's not going to work out for him at all. I mean, like I said, Draven has had a two times at least lead in economy for most of this game. And player one has not. So this really is game. It's just a matter of time. It's a matter of when the Thunders come in and actually deal with this. And that Deep Authority, that submarine is finally being built, but it doesn't really matter. There's nothing in the sea. Draven has not gone for the sea. He just conquered the Ismus right away and has been pushing in from there. Vigil Plant being rebuilt, but the Hammers will be able to tear that apart before it's done. And down it goes. Oh, not quite. Come on, there you can do it. There it goes. Now it's, now it's gone. Completely gone. And radar finally, finally, player one builds a radar. And some, well, okay, that was just a vast, I believe, from the looks of it. Which is actually kind of surprising. I didn't know he was going for those. I was going purely for thunders, but apparently not. So these thunders. Okay. There they are. Now they're going for the kill. He knows where that. He knows the factory is. He's going to attack it. Each thunder deals actually quite a lot of damage. 1280 damage each. Though that's a few bombs for it, but. These guys, on their own, five of them won't be able to kill the tower right away, but with the hammer support, they should be fine, actually. And there goes the bombs! See, like not dealing out that much damage to the tower. They aren't... Okay, they haven't all been dropped, that's why. But even then, the tower is about half health now. I mean, right now, player one really should just surrender. He hasn't got much hope. He has no anti-air. He has certainly no strategic anti-air. I mean, he, need, he would need air units of his own to really deal with the thunders there. His tower is the only thing he has left. He is building building a flat gun. That will be okay, but not great. Hammers as well coming in. The tower doing what it can to deal with the hammers that are around it, but it's really not enough. This tower is at half health now. Oh, and Peewee's coming in just in case, just to finish things off. I mean, the hammers are really what's dealing most of the damage. The hammers, it's 590 damage a shot. Peewees are about half. Actually, no, it, no, Peewees are half that, but a much higher rate of fire. So this might just work. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Player one has lost. This this is game. That game has already been called. Or it hasn't been called yet, but player one has lost. He apparently is just waiting for his command center to be destroyed, and then that's game. And there it goes, blowing everything up in its wake. That's game. Not entirely surprising, Draven is a very strong player. It would have been a bit of an upset if player one won, but I didn't know who player one is, so I couldn't really comment. But now we have some knowledge of who he is, so... Yeah. Still, doesn't matter who you are, scout! Scouting is very important. So, update on here. Pepe Ampere is going against Mac. Yaoshi is going to be... has beaten Moon Man. He's going to be up against Draven. And... Not too confident there. Pepe Ampere, however, I want to see if he's going to go with Make. That... I... Okay, that has started so far. The thing I want to see is Pepe Ampere versus Gode. Because Gode is... Pepe Ampere and Gode is the match that everyone's sort of waiting for. That is the match. That is the big match. They're the two strongest players. Everyone else is just sort of... I mean, it'd be interesting if there's any upsets. But it's kind of a race for third place at this point for pretty much every other player. A little unfortunate, but yeah, it's... That's kind of the reality of it, unfortunately. Is that God is God knows how to play this game. Pepe Ampere also knows how to play this game really well. So that's the big one. 
Once Pepe and Pan, I mean, Pepe and Pan and Mac, if Mac wins, then Mac versus God will be interesting, because that means Mac's actually really powerful. He's quite a new player, though, so it'd be an upset. It'd be a cool upset, but it'd be an upset. Pepe and Pan, on the other hand, is the favorite to win that match, and then he'll be going on to Gota afterwards, assuming he wins. We're just waiting for probably Draven and Yaoshi, from the looks of it. Although I don't want to miss Pepe and Pan and Gota. And since they're both in the stream, they're probably both going to be... Hopefully they're going to be both considerate of that. Now, okay, Yaoshi is in here, Draven's in here-ish. Well, no, he's not. They're double-checking the lobby. So anyway, I will be back shortly once... Okay, go to pointing out that Pau and Daniil are also good. And... Yeah. Yeah, seeing them play, they aren't bad. I suppose I could see that happening, that working out for them. So... Third and fourth place, I guess. It's just... I'd be surprised if either of them took first. I wouldn't be surprised if they took third or fourth, though. Oh, sorry. Apparently it's Yoshi. It's actually... Even though it's spelled Yoshi, it's spelled, it's pronounced Yoshi. Good to know. Okay, and apparently Dust Boss won against Takeshi Box as well. So he's going to be against Daniil, and Yoshi's going to be against Draven. So I'm not sure who is the better option to cast between Daniil and Douse Boss and Yoshi and Draven. So anyway, once I figure out which one to do, I will be back, so stay tuned.